he can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. Good morning, people. You're welcome again to Gateway to Life. I am Pastor Bridget Ogbefun, and I am so very full of joy to be alive this morning, and I am sure you're feeling the same way because so many people started the, this year, 2017, and just as the year is wrapping up, we're hearing so many, you know, news of untimely death and all that. You know, each time those news come, I just see it as a privilege and I count it, you know, I, I, I count it all joy to be alive, to be among the living. It's not because I'm worth it. It's not because I deserve it. It's not because I'm doing all the right things. It's not because I'm eating all the right food. It's not because I'm exercising. It's just because of the grace of God. As a matter of fact, when I sit down and look at the way I live, look at the way I eat, look at the things I do, I don't even deserve to have a healthy life. But God's mercy you know, has prevailed. I said all this to say, do not take life for granted. Don't see it as your right. It's your privilege. It's a privilege. Yes, Christ exchanged his life for us on the cross, but if not for God, if not for his divine protection, the devil would have had you and I, you know, for food. Hallelujah, but God is a good God. Having said all that, let's just pray before we go into what we have today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you all the praise and all the glory because you are a good God and there's no one like you because you are worthy to be praised because you are the ancient of days because you are the prince of peace and the eternal rock of ages because you are the one that cannot change because you are the one that cannot fail I give you all the praise and all the glory I thank you oh God for your word that is so powerful I thank you for your word that cannot be compared to any other I thank you oh God for your word that is coming to transform transform your word that is coming to give meaning this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for the hearers of this word, oh God, that you will help us, oh God, to be like that man that looks at himself in the mirror and is able to take correction, not as the man that looks at himself in the mirror and the minute he turns away, he forgets the manner of man that he looks like. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, because your word will heal, it will save, it will liberate this morning in the mighty name of Jesus in Jesus mighty name I pray amen again you are welcome it is gateway to life and this morning we are continuing with the series you know um, saved to serve saved to serve we have been saved to serve or some people would even put it called to serve you know that like we we have been trying to establish in the last five weeks or so the Bible says that, you know, it, 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 it said the, the laborers are few. It said the, the harvest is plenty. I'm a paraphrasing. He said, but the, he said, he said, but the laborers are few. And so God has chosen you and I because he knows that there is great work in the field to be done. He knows that there's great work in the field to be accomplished. He knows that the harvest is plenty. He knows that the work on the field is massive. But you and I have been saved not to glory in it, not to take pride in it, but to, be, to, to serve. And we also have established that in service unto God, we are also trying to live our life in such a way that we become like a magnetic force know that attracts people to the kingdom of God and not doing the opposite. You know, we should live our life in such a way that people want to serve our God. We should live our life in such a way that people want to know who this our God is. 
we ought to live our life in such a way so that people were able, you know, to confess, even as Ruth did in the time of old that she said to her mother-in-law, she said, I want your God to be my God. I want your people to be my people. We ought to live our life in such a way that people will say, whatever it is that is that your God, I want to know him. Hallelujah. And so, in so doing, we will be acting as instrument of expansion you know to the kingdom of god here on earth and so this morning last week we started the the subtopic um hindrances to effective evangelism we started it last week we looked at the hindrances to effective service and so we looked at self-centeredness we have looked at pride we have looked at unholy living we looked at fear, we looked at poor health status, we looked at discouragement, and this morning we want to continue from there. But before we continue, I want us to quickly look at the book of, you know, Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. Look at what the Bible says. It says, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. The last um, point we left off with last week is discouragement that people get discouraged especially when it seems that there's nothing to show for all their labor all the effort they put into the things they do into the service of God when it looks like there is nothing to show for it you know something crossed my mind you know in the course of the week when you are working for God and you are doing it genuinely and your service is unto God and not unto man don't bother yourself by the results that you see in the first place it is not you who will bring increase it is not you who will bring the result the spirit of god is there to convince the spirit of god is there you know to, to, to cause people to respond to the service that you are giving to god it's not about how much the, how much physical results you can see the most important thing is that you are carrying out your service unto God with a pure mind, with a genuine heart, with a genuine spirit, with a sole aim, aim of propagating the gospel. Just do it and leave it for God to do the rest. No wonder the Bible says that even though Paul planted, even though Apollos watered, he says it's God that gives increase. If we can allow that to resonate in our spirit, man, if we can allow that to rest in us, then we will stop, we will stop panicking, you know, for things that are unnecessary. You may be in charge of a group and you are giving God your utmost service and it looks like the group is not growing. I'm not saying you should relax and watch things just rot away. You just keep doing what you should be doing, praying the way you should and leave it in the hands of God. Let God do the rest. Hallelujah. We have been called to serve. So I say that to say, do not be discouraged when it seems as if you are doing what you ought to be doing and there's really nothing to show for it. It may be a new ministry you just started. It looks like you are putting in so much, so much hours of evangelism, door-to-door -door evangelism, you know, one-on-one -on -one evangelism. You have been doing that and yet it seems as if it's not showing in what you are doing and then you want to give up. I have come to tell you, I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning, but hold on. Hold on, hold on. Galatians 6, 9, where we just read. It says that if you do not faint, you shall reap. In due season, you shall reap. Just keep sowing. Just keep sowing. Just keep rendering your service. Just keep doing what you ought to be doing. No wonder the Bible says in the morning, sow thy seed. In the evening, withhold not thy seed. Just keep putting that seed in the ground. And in due season you will reap it and don't forget the word of god says he said cast your bread upon the water that thing that seems you know to satisfy you for now make that sacrifice the bible says cast your bread upon the water he said after many days hallelujah after many days he said you will get it back hallelujah and so this morning do not be discouraged 
Do not let the things that you have experienced in your past, you know, affect the service that you give to God. And some people are bowed because of one or two ugly experiences they had, even in the, in the house of God. And, and you are that verge, you are that, that point where you are vowed. You say, you see me, I don't want to serve God anymore. It's a very, diff, it's a very dangerous decision to make. My brother and my sister, you may be watching me, no matter how deep that cut you had, no matter how hot you got, it is a very dangerous terrain to be for you to say you are withholding your service unto God. So I'm saying to you today, do not be discouraged. Keep doing it in due season. You will receive your reward. And the next point we are looking at this morning is unhealthy rivalry among leaders unhealthy rivalry among leaders in christ when there's unhealthy rivalry it will lead to disunity in the body of christ and that is a major hindrance to effective service when there's unhealthy rivalry I want us to look at, you know, I have to go and look up the meaning of the word rivalry. What exa exactly are we talking about? And I came up with this. Rivalry, it says competition for the same objective or for superiority in the same field. I will say that again. Rivalry is competition for the same ob objective or for superiority in the same field. We have a lot of that going on today in the body. Unhealthy rivalry. At the end of the day, it is making us not to be able to render effective service unto God. Because in the first place, we allow that thought, you know, to be cloud our mind it's like it's a competition. And then though we have been called to serve, we begin to carry out our service at least as if we are, we, we are in competition with one another. And we begin to compare ourselves with ourselves. And don't forget the Bible says that it's only a foolish man that compares himself, themselves with themselves. The Bible says that they that compare themselves with, with themselves, he said they are not wise. And so this morning, I have come to admonish you. I have come to remind you because some of us already know. Let us not good give room for unhealthy rivalry in the name of carrying out our services unto God. I want us to quickly see what the Bible says in the book of First Corinthians chapter 3. We are looking at unhealthy rivalry and how it affects efficient service. How it would affect us, you know, from giving God, you know, efficient service. So we want to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Let's look at what the Bible says from verse 4 through 6 he says for while one saith i am of paul and another i am of apollos are ye not carnal who then is paul and who is apollos but ministers by whom ye believed even as the lord gave to every man I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. I want to see verse 7. It says, so then neither is he that planted anything, neither he is he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. And so brethren, I want you to know that in this field of service to God, we are called out to complement one another. We are called out to work together. And that is why the Bible gave the illustration by using the members of the human body. Though we have different parts, they all function as one body. 
You know, some days back, I was trying to explain to my children, I was telling them, I said, look, that every nerve in the human body, directly or indirectly, are connected. The brain, you know, sends messages throughout the entire body, and the entire body gives feedback. And I told them, I said, when it is not so, when the brain cannot get a message from any part of the body effectively, or when it cannot pass a message across, then something is terribly wrong. I don't have to be a medical personnel to know that. And that is why if you have ever suffered toothache, you find out that even when one tooth is aching, it's like the entire, your entire teeth are, you know, are bad. And when you have an earache, it affects your entire body. That is how we ought to be in the body of Christ. When we have that mentality that we are all called to serve in the same field with one aim, expansion in the kingdom, and with the ultimate goal of making heaven, if we have that mentality in our mind, then we will quit trying to pull down one another in the name of service. We will abhor unhealthy rivalry amongst us, even as children of God. Because the Bible made us to understand why the segregation, why are you saying, I am of Paul, this is my doctrine, this is my denomination, this is where I belong to. And the next one says, I am of Apollos. The Bible says that both he that planted and he that watered. He said, they are nothing. It's God who gives the increase. If you and I allow this to rest in us, then we will have less of the chaotic happenings that we have even in the church today. Hallelujah. We have been called to serve. So in being called to serve, quit trying to outdo your brother. Quit trying to outshine your fellow brother. All of us have been called to walk in this vineyard together. Let us put aside our differences. Let us be united in Christ. Let's forget about denominations. Let's forget the names of our, of our churches and come together as one body with the aim of carrying out an effective service with the aim of dealing, you know, blows to the kingdom of Satan that they can never be able to recover from. Let us put aside competition. Let us put aside rivalry. Let us put aside, you know, pride and embrace this work and walk in such a way that the name of the Lord is glorified. We are looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 1 again from verse 12 to 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 from verse 12. It says, Now this I say that every one of you said, I am of Paul, and I am of Apollos, and I am of Cephas, and I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I, have, I baptized none of you but Shripos and Gaius. Lest any should say that I had baptized in my own name. And I baptized also the household of Stephanas. Besides, I know not whether I baptize any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made to none effect. Hallelujah. Did you get that? Thank God for the great apostle Paul, who knew exactly his mission in the field and that takes me to the next point that in this field of service we all have our various functions 
We all have the different things, you know, the different areas that we are graced for. We all have the different aspect of this service that we have been anointed for. I want you to follow me this morning. When you allow that to rest in you, then there will be no room for jealousy. Then there will be no room for competition. Then there will be no room for you to want to assign one another because you know you have different things to do in the field with one aim. And that is why the writer of First Corinthians, he said, he said, I have not been called to baptize. Did he say baptize? baptism or the act of baptizing people did he say is bad no did he say is lower than what he has been called to do no but look at what he says here he says but christ sent me not to baptize but to preach the gospel there is no way in the bible he says that baptizing people is less than preaching the gospel or that preaching the gospel is superior to baptizing people follow me this morning in other words everybody is not called to be a preacher everybody is not called to be on the podium with a microphone in their hand everybody is not called to be in charge but we have all be called unto service. And that is what this author is saying here. Even though I may have baptized one or two times, I know what I have been called to do. He said that I have been called to preach the gospel. My duty primarily is not to baptize people. And it will be out of place for him to try to outshine that fellow that has been called to carry out the act of baptism. It will be out of place, an absolute waste of time to try to do that. As a matter of fact, if in the body of Christ you are still with that attitude of trying to outshine your fellow brother or trying to prove a point to them, it means that you do not know what you have been called into. It means that you do not understand what this call to service is about. And so I have come to let us know this morning. It is not a competition. It is an individual race. Though we are many, we have one aim. And the sole aim is to follow after the work of Christ on Calvary. Whatever it is you have been called to do, your sole aim is to point people to the road of salvation. Let us quit unhealthy rivalry amongst one another because that is not what we have been called to do. We have been called to serve. Hallelujah. I wrote here, I said, it is an individual obligation to serve God and not a competition. You are not in a race with anybody. Do not compare yourself with another person. Because on that day, you and I will stand as individual on the day of judgment. On the day when Christ shall come, we shall go as individuals. Let us try to preserve unity. In so preserving unity, we will be able to carry out our function. The right hand should know its function. The left hand should know its function. They should both know that though they are called hands, they have different things. Me as a human being, as an individual, there are certain things I could do with my right hand that I can't do with my left hand. There are certain things that the mouth can do that the eyes cannot do. Does it mean that the eyes are better than the, than the mouth? No, sir. They are all put in the right position where they are put in order for them to work together to function as a healthy body. The same way, whatever gift you think you have been given, whatever area you think you have been graced, we are all given these things as different people to come together to function as one healthy body. Hallelujah. 
And so I am saying to you this morning, dear, to preserve unity in the body, in the process of carrying out your service unto God, dear, to promote unity. And so let's see what the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Hallelujah. We have been called to serve. We have been called to serve. We have been called to serve. So let us see what the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Quickly we want to see from verse 1. It says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Hallelujah. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace there is one body and one spirit even as ye are called in one hope of your calling one lord one faith one baptism one god and father of all who is above all and through all in you all that is what the word of god says we are one body we have one spirit we have one baptism have you accepted christ as your lord and savior does the spirit of god dwell on your inside then we are one body we have not been called to tear each other apart in the name of rendering service we have been called to work together in unity in the name of getting that kingdom of god expanded here on earth and depopulating the kingdom of the devil come on that is the sole aim why you and i have been called let us do away with all pettiness with all those rivalries with all those competition let us not let the devil distract us from this aim, from this service that we have been called into. People of God, we will continue next week because we have been called to give God undiluted service. And that you and I ought to do with no reservation. Like I said the last time, in all that you do, in all way that you carry out your service unto God, let this be your watchword. God is watching. Whatever you do, God is watching. And I'll leave you with that. Until I come back your way next week, I want you to keep basking in this truth that you are a champion and you are born to rule and reign in life. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. Come on, I got it.